keep getting the same questions. It's good stuff. Some people are smacking around at me. Other people are literally asking questions and want to know the answer. And this one's going to be, why wouldn't you just decide what aero platform you want to shoot and tune the bow as opposed to using the Sirius Ranch Ferry test kits with two spines and a bunch of field points and shooting bear shaft. Got an answer for that? And by the way, the frog fishing's been awesome. Stay tuned. Okay, I get this on both sides of the coin. Um, I get detractors who say, you're just selling us stuff. The test kits are stupid. I don't understand anything about that. That's key. They don't understand anything about that. And you can just get a 340 spine arrow and tune the bow to shoot out of 60, 70, 80 pounds. I am completely and utterly aware that you can bend the bow. I am 100% had it done in the old days. You go to the shop or you do it yourself. <coughs> you get in front of the paper, you slam the trigger as hard as you possibly can, and then you twist the cables or adjust the yokes or whatever the, it's, there's a lot of different bow platforms out there. And you make the bow shoot the arrow you have chosen to shoot. Generally that decision is made, you've decided that velocity is the key and you wanna go a certain speed, that's probably 90% of people. So they have decided that using some kind of calculator tool, and by the way, the calculator tools are a bunch of BS too, because I promise you they haven't shot every aero platform on the earth through a lab radar to find out if the velocities are actually accurate. So it's a guesstimate estimate. Just saying. Anyway, let's say you've got a chrono. You went to the, wherever, you got them at home, you got a shop, whatever. Not really bashing on the shops here, it's just the most convenient place for a lot of people to interact on this. You get a bunch of arrows, you stand in front of the chrono and you say, I wanna go 285 feet per second with your bow platform. And you find the arrow you have found that flies 285 feet per second because you arbitrarily decided that that's the ultimate arrow system for whatever reason. You take that arrow, whatever spine it might be, 300, 400, and you get the bow and you go to your tech who's got the knowledge to do that and might have a draw board and all the other things, and they bend the bow and make it shoot the arrow straight. Well, that's wobbling like crazy down range. Don't mind that as far as bow hunting is concerned. The trouble I always had, I'm 54 years old this year. Okay, so if this video stays up for a while, I want 54 when you're watching it. <laughs> Be old. I've been shooting a bow since I was 12. Pre-carbon. I hunted with a longbow with woodies. I've killed a couple of javelinas with flint points with hand tie feathers. I went totally off the wall on that stuff. It was super fun and quite effective, I might add. I've run the gamut. And the one thing I've never owned is a press, drawboard, all that other stuff. And I've got a ton of bow hunting friends and acquaintances, and none of them have that stuff. So what I tried to do was help people who could just redneck it in their backyard, take their bow, and by having two different spines, and I don't know any other company selling a kit like this. You get two spines of arrows, you get the same inserts, in our case they're always 100 grain, and then you get five different field points. And here's the key. Given your bow and its current tune, every point you add to the shaft on 300 spines, so 100, 125, 150, 175, and 200 grain points come with the kits. It bends the air different. You're kind of doing the same thing backwards as bending the bow. 
The only thing we've achieved is you're getting a higher forward to center arrow. You're getting more mass because it's a bow hunting arrow. So we're not as concerned about deciding how fast it should go or whatever arbitrary means. Other bow hunters, probably 90% of people, just decide that the arrow is going to penetrate. And what we're trying to find is a higher mass, higher forward to center bow hunting arrow and which ones will fly. What's interesting about the test kits, and I get this all the time, is people will shoot three or four different combinations and they will fly. If you take your bow and shoot a 340 at 28 and a half and 70 pounds and you tune that bow to shoot that arrow, it's unlikely it will shoot other arrows well because it's tuned to the way that particular one shaft bends. So this is where we kind of have common ground. Although most people won't see it that way. By changing the way the arrow bends. So when you launch, let's get an arrow. Eh, here's one right here. When you launch your arrow, and yeah, this isn't as good. Hang on, I'm gonna get big Jake. Jake, Jake from the hunting public. He's the one who we named it after him. Apparently, there's arrows everywhere. Uh. Hey, Brett Sweeney, that's your arrow that just flew on the ground, but it's fine. I, I didn't step on it. Okay. So, I broke the tip off. I don't know what happened. Bad structural integrity, Barnett. Barnett 3D printed this thing, and it's all bent up and bad structural integrity. I don't think I was supposed to be leaning on it like a cane. He didn't know that was going to happen. All right. So, I'm going to pull that off just to make it more clear. There would be a point on here, get a grip. So you'd have an insert, right? You'd have a half jacket on there. This is an Apollo right here, the old Ranch Ferry Fletch. You launch your bow and you have a 100 gram point and it only bends that much when it takes off or it bends up or whatever. You put 125, it bends more. You put 150, it bends more. 175, it bends more. You think bending is a bad thing. Bending is inevitable. If you shoot a really light spined arrow out of a high poundage bow to go really fast, it is bending like a banana because it is such a soft spine. And it's going down range wobbling like crazy. The bending is the key. It's almost kind of like a harmonics thing, like a, an out of tune guitar string. It's really, that's a really pretty good way to look at your arrows wobbling going down range and you're trying to find the right bending rate often multiple bending rates of the different spine arrows and different field point combinations what you basically are shooting when you shoot a test kit is 10 different arrows they're the same length two different spines and five field points so what i tried to do was help because when i started trying to figure out how to bear shaft my bow this is six or eight years ago. There wasn't a lot of information on this. I had a wad of arrows. A few of them. I got every brand and stripe on the earth. Big Mike Tanaka was helping me figure this stuff out. And I'm not very smart, but I learn fast. And I was trying to figure out how to help people bear shaft better because I struggled when I tried to bear shaft one arrow back in the day when I decided that the arrow that I was going to shoot was the best penetrator. Instead of shooting the arrows that fly really good. I keep saying that because a perfectly flying arrow that tends to dampen as it goes down range and stays on the shot line is the best penetrating arrow. Obviously, you get one of the Branch Ferry test kits from Sirius and you're going to have a higher mass projectile with more forward to center. That's completely and 100% based around a penetrating projectile on target. And then you will learn to shoot the thing. It's a totally reverse engineer mindset. To think about building the highest penetration arrow or highest penetration projectile first 
which means a cut on contact broadhead, right? Like the Magnus Stinger. Okay, something that really offers low resistance, the old 300 grain hammer from Tough Head. Something that really is efficient on target and figuring out how to get them to fly perfect. So you have a really efficient broadhead at impact on meat. You're able to get in your backyard, set up a paper tuning stand. Here's a clip. This is in some of my other videos, but this guy's a genius. This is the most simple way to do this. And he just set up a, a stand. Watch this. Still an adult era. But you can see our little setup here. Got the weight on top. We just cut out a cardboard box. Tape some paper on the cutout. Got the garbage can with the chair. You know, you can do this at home. You can do it anywhere. Just start testing. Sweet. You see, it doesn't have to be anything real complex. Seven yards, get a test kit, and go find out which arrow combinations bend in the best for your bow platform. One of the troubles with it is draw length. Some people shoot 26 and a half, some people shoot 31. And so this kit will allow that bending rate to occur. A 70 pound bow at 26 inches does not push nearly as hard as 70 pounds at 31 because the arrow's on the string so much longer with the longer draw length, okay? So it really gets a big shove, whereas it's a much shorter impulse with a shorter draw length. So you can't just spitball everybody and say, for 70 pounds, it's always the 250. That's not always true. For 70 pounds, if you're shooting 26 inches, you may shoot a 300, which is actually lighter, a little more forward to center. That seems counterintuitive for talking to the ranch ferry, but everybody says, all I think about is putting 700 grains on the front. It just gets exhausting. <laughs> I've said, could you please go cut on contact, perfect arrow flight, sharpen your broadheads, and try to get around 550 or more perfect arrow flight? And these kits do that. You can get the extreme field point kit. We have the high FOC kit, which is 100 to 200 grains. There's a ton of broadhead platforms in that in that arena, right? So if 150 tunes, there's a lot of choices, three blades, two blades, great cut on contact stuff. And then if you wanna go extreme, you do the same thing. You spine up a little bit and we have 200 to 300 grand field points. So if you wanna go for the one pump pump, or if you're going big game hunting, gonna go shoot Cape Buffalo or something, you're gonna wanna do that. And you're wanna, gonna wanna lean towards the 250 or 300 grain side, but still you'll have two shafts multiple field points and there's really minor adjustments when you find out how the bow wants to bend the arrow to fly perfectly with you shooting it and this i haven't been able to prove this like down to a t and make a you know video about it or write it down but i have had a bow that i couldn't it's like i i couldn't bear shaft the thing like its grip was real tweaky and if i've I really had to have, it was real sensitive to grip pressure. My son is the same size as me. She's 28 and a half and he just pulls my bows because he's 25. It doesn't matter if it's 80 pounds. He's strong as a bull. I'm an old man. So I gave him that bow and said, man, I can't make this thing shoot. And the third arrow that we changed the field point on, it was zing for him. He's like, it looks fine to me. I went, hmm. Maybe it's a form thing. So there's a very significant possibility that the test kit also works with your form and your grip pressure. Again, the arrows are bending different. So if you're torquing a little bit for one specific arrow, it may bend a little bit more and take the torque out. Okay, take the torque out, but still fly for you the way you grip it. Nobody really should be torquing it sideways. I mean, you don't torque your bow to the side and turn your wrist backwards. I got that. But the idea that there aren't a bunch of people just in their backyards trying to figure this out is crazy. I bet 90% of the people out there go to the shop, get a basic tune, and then they go in their backyards, they're slinging it around, and they don't 
I'm, I'm sure they're watching a lot of videos and YouTube is a great resource for all learning. And they're probably looking at some stuff and wondering this and that and the other. But to only have one aero system to try to get it to fly perfect and bend the bow to make it shoot just didn't make a lot of sense to me for the millions of bow hunters who have time at their house and a shop is an hour and a half away. So I tried to make things simpler for somebody who just wants to do it that way. And that's the reason for the test kits. Variability, flexibility, durability, and really honestly, building a bow hunting arrow from the get go that flies perfect. 750 grain sideways is not as efficient as 600 flying perfect with the same broadhead platform. It's just not, because it's gonna hit the target like that and be heavy. Well, the back of the arrow is gonna kick out when it hits the target when it's heavy. But 600 going like that, well, my pipe's bent a little bit, but you get the idea. Going straight into the target is gonna drive and the tail's not gonna wiggle around. When the when an arrow hits the target and the back of the arrow is a little sideways, it's going to touch something more resistant than air and immediately it's going to torque it and kick the tail of the arrow and make it go sideways. It's very similar to driving a nail with a hammer and missing a little bit. If you hit a plumb, it goes straight. If you hit it a little off, it tends to lean because the point's buried in something very dense. And if you don't hit a plumb, it doesn't drive. It is exactly like that, except it's more catastrophic because we're hoping that the front of the animal is always this way and it kicks towards the front. But there's a 50% chance <laughs> that you hit your deer and his head's this way and it's this way and goes the wrong direction. If we could design an arrow, that always tail kicked a little bit, you know, so it drove the broadhead into the lethal part of the animal. That'd be awesome. But I, I haven't figured that one out yet because they sometimes they turn this way and sometimes they turn that way. Maybe you could have multiple arrows in your quiver and fletch them different colors and you know one of them leans this way. So if he's facing that way, you shoot them and they go forward. And then fletch another set that, you know, hits goes left. And if they're facing that way, you just switch arrows and shoot them. That would be awesome. Just doesn't seem very practical. So that's the reason why the test kits versus just tuning your bow and bending it. Simplicity, backyard capability, and we are building a bow hunting platform when you build the test kit. So if you want to get a test kit, just type in Ranch Fairy Store in the Googler, and you'll end up on my on my page at Sirius. If you have some questions about which test kit to get, hit me at Troy at RanchFairy.com or find me on Instagram, Ranch Fairy, and just hit me on the messages. Give me your draw length, draw weight, etc., and I'll recommend a test kit for you. And then behind that, uh, these are bloody, but you know, whatever. Where are you? Oh, yeah, well, right here. Yeah. This is what the fletchings are going to look like, but they're going to be clean. <laughs> this is a test arrow, but it's got the ranch fairy wrap on it. We got ranch fairy on the fletch, tore the ranch fairy fletch off. Oh, no. Oh, it's gone. That's sad. I was uh, testing at the, at the test lab, too, and these are the arrows that went through the testing, and these are all of them. These are just the ones I can refletch. We broke a few, you know, hard on stuff. There's a cleaner one. Got the Ranch Fairy wrap, Ranch Fairy fletch, blah, blah, blah. You see, you get the drift. So what you do is, when you find what flies, let's say it's a 250, 150 gram point, there's a lot of 150 gram broadheads, that's a good deal. You can go right behind that, go to the Ranch Fairy store and order Ranch Fairy arrows, exact match. This is highly recommended. Um, if you do the process in the, in the description, I'll have a link to the bear shaft tuning process that I recommend. Step by step, you can follow it. If you're going to shoot another brand of arrow, don't use my test kit. Get whatever spines we recommend from them. Because I've been surprised at the inconsistency between brands 
of a 250 spine arrow. And it's just the way that the uh, carbon lays down. It's in me trying to sell you anything. I just told you not to buy our stuff if you're gonna shoot something else. Go get theirs. Stay with the shaft, okay? But in that Paul Arrows right there, I've got every brand on the earth. Some of them are less expensive carbon. Let's just make that a fact. That's how the price points are lower. And they're very, very finicky. Some of them are more consistent. Some of them um, are real, real, real finicky when you're bear shafting. And other ones are more forgiving. Okay, so if you buy a serious test kit, I recommend you buy serious arrows. If you roll your own, order bear shafts. That's fine. That's why we made the whole system. You get the serious arrows, you get the test kit, you just go buy our arrows fletched. If you're gonna get another brand, do watch the video, it's in the description, and use that brand bear shaft and just duplicate what I what I recommend. Get a 300 and a 250 or whatever I tell you. Get a heavier insert or don't. And then you can also go to the store and buy the, the field points. You can buy the high FOC 100 to 100 to 200 grain, 100 to 200 grain or the extreme. 200 to 300 if you're going with a one pump pump big boy arrow and test with that shaft and then build or buy that shaft exactly the same don't change them i've tried it man they just aren't perfect and we need to be perfect all right that's the ranch fairy thanks for watching uh this is just something i wanted to cover a little bit uh, 20 minutes of it <laughs> I hope I laid out my case that I'm just trying to make it easier for people who shoot around a lot at their house more than they do at the shop. And I'm not trying to keep you from going to shops They're good places and there's a lot of great people out there. But variability, flexibility, simplicity, and an answer. That's what I was trying to get. So, all right, well, that's that. So you can subscribe if you want to. If you don't, don't, don't care. Uh, would you hit the dinger bell? I guess that's supposed to be cool. Thumbs up thing. I, I don't know. I think that does something for me, but I post videos with net crops and get punished by YouTube. So I kind of, I like the subscribers. Thanks for watching, but I get whacked a lot for showing internal organs and stuff because the YouTube people are sensitive about that. All right. Well, I'll, I'll see you later. <laughs>